Hi guys, my name is Terrell, and in case you haven't met me yet, I'm a level 2 nursing student here at BCIT. And in this video, I'm going to give you guys a couple tips on how best to prepare for clinical. If possible, start your patient research as soon as you can. Um, usually it's released around 4 p.m., but that can vary based on your instructor. But you want to make sure you get a jump start on it right, right away because you're not, you never know if you're going to have really complex patients or really simple patients that you've seen the diagnoses for before. So it's always better to start early in case you have six hours of research. And then if you only have two, you can either take the evening off or try and get something else done. Always start with the regular physiology. If you're in level one, then this is going to be required, but in level two, our research is a little bit more freelance. So I find it really helpful to start with the anatomy and physiology first. So that way, when I'm looking at the pathophysiology, I have a better idea of what the abnormal versus normal is. It also helps in clinical, that way you'll be able to recognize the difference between what is normal and what is abnormal. After you've established the physiology and anatomy, the first place I would go is to my med surge textbook. Now I'm not sure if everyone has this, but it is a required textbook for the, co or for the program and it's incredibly useful at giving a lot of really important nursing information. Online sometimes when I try and Google diagnoses, at least at the start, I find you get bombarded with a lot of terminology that we might not always understand. And so it's really good to kind of go and get the nursing essential basics of the concept. And then if you require a deeper knowledge to really understand what's going on, then you can kind of supplement that with online or checking your pathophysiology textbook even. Um, so that would be where I would go first after establishing anatomy. Try to make connections between your patient's history and their diagnosis as well as their medications. Uh, a tool that I use a lot of times is mind mapping. This is a really helpful way of visually representing how everything's related. It's really important to know for your client as well, your instructor's probably going to expect you to know it. So if you do it in advance, then you kind of have a one-up on being able to answer all of their questions. As part of the nursing program, we all have those learning plans that we either use a lot or maybe dislike using. But one way that I really help enhance my own learning in the clinical is I make a list for myself the night before of things that I want to accomplish with each patient. And I also highlight goals on the front of my cheat sheets. That way I kind of keep in mind, what am I really trying to improve this week when I'm in clinical? Um, this really just helps focus what you're doing and it also is a strategy that you can use on your learning plan as well. Clinical is extremely exhausting. I don't know about you guys, but I almost always end up taking a nap after my morning shifts. Um, make sure you get a lot of sleep the night before. You're not going to be much of a help to your patients if you're exhausted and not able to think properly on your feet. And also, it's not going to be so great if you're so exhausted that you're fainting or just feeling rough exerting yourself at the hospital. So make sure you get to bed nice and early. Don't stay up too late doing your clinical ass assignment research. Um, and have a good rest so that you're ready to start the day. So anyways, those are just some of my tips of what I do, but I'd really like to hear if you guys have any extra tips. I mean, we're all students and we're all in this together. So please feel free to share those in the comments section so that we can all get a bit of help preparing better for clinical. Take care. Bye.